this video will briefly discuss the role and maintenance of pool riffle sequences. We will look at what they are, where they occur, their role in balancing a stream's energy use, and how they may be maintained. A pool riffle sequence is a pattern of alternating shallow and deeper sections of a stream. The high points are called riffles and the deeper areas are pools. They occur in portions of streams with gentle average slopes, usually less than a 1% decline. Theories have changed over time, but it is now understood that pool riffle sequences are surprisingly ubiquitous, occurring in both alluvial and bedrock streams, and in both meandering and relatively straight streams. But why do they occur? Well, streams tend to adjust themselves to efficiently transport material downstream. They choose their course of flow so that the time rate of potential energy expenditure per unit mass of water along its course is at a minimum. Basically, a stream will move water and sediment along, but it will do so using as little energy as possible and as slowly as possible. So they want to minimize their energy use, shown as dH, and maximize the time it takes to move it, shown as dT. And it's been mathematically proven that a mass of water moving from a point A to a point C has a higher rate along a straight slope than when it detours through a higher point B. When moving through B, the water takes longer to travel to C, lowering the rate. And that's exactly what riffles do. So pools and riffles help rivers conserve energy. But there is some confusion surrounding how rivers maintain that pool riffle sequence. And here's why. Riffles are made up of coarser sediment than pools. We often see water flowing quickly over the riffles and barely moving in the pools. But sediment is deposited when water flows slowly, and coarser sediment is deposited before finer sediment. So if water flows slower in the pools, why isn't the stream eroding the riffles and depositing coarse sediment into the pools? Well, pool riffle sequences actually last a very long time, so there must be some mechanism that maintains them. In 1971, Keller proposed the velocity reversal mechanism. He measured the velocity of water flowing at the bottom of pools and riffles in a creek. At low flows, water was faster over riffles than pools, but with increasing discharge, the velocity over pools increased faster than over riffles. So when the stream filled up to a certain level, water flowed just as fast at the base of the pools. Above that point, velocity reversal occurred, where water moved faster over pools than riffles. So at low flows with low velocities, coarse material like gravel isn't really transported by water. But at high flows, when coarse sediment can be picked up by the swift moving water, they're preferentially deposited on riffles, where the velocity slows. But this mechanism doesn't apply to all pool riffle stream segments. Some studies contradict or disprove the theory, while others have proposed that velocity reversal only occurs under specific conditions and have built on the theory. Either way, there are other mechanisms of maintenance, such as shear stress reversal, and turbulent water over riffles vibrating particles and creating a stable, erosion-resistant structure. But there's still a lack of consensus regarding what really maintains pool riffle sequences and whether any one mechanism can be applied to all of them.